Good afternoon and welcome to this virtual press point. Uh, the Secretary General and the President will make uh, introductory remarks uh, and then we'll take a couple of questions by Skype. Secretary General. President Kalulaid, uh, dear Kasti, it's uh, great to welcome you once again to NATO headquarters uh, and uh, thank you for being here today and uh, discussing uh, different issues of great importance for Estonia and uh, for uh, NATO. Um, it is uh, always a great pleasure to welcome you back to uh, these uh, headquarters and I appreciate your strong personal commitment to our alliance. And I want to thank Estonia for showing solidarity with allies and partners throughout the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. For instance, by donating critical medical supplies to Italy and Spain and supporting Georgia and Ukraine. Estonia also uh, makes valuable contributions to our shared security. Your troops serve uh, in Afghanistan, helping to create the conditions for peace. You lead, by example, on defence spending, investing more than 2% uh, of GDP uh, in defence. And next month, you will virtually host a cyber coalition, one of the largest cyber defence exercises in the world. Experts from Europe and North America will test their ability to defend NATO and national networks. Such exercises are an integral part of building our resilience to cyber attacks. So the Alliance benefits from Estonia's contributions, and NATO is fully committed to Estonia's security. Allied jets keep your skies safe, Allied ships patrol the uh, Baltic Sea, and NATO's battle groups uh, in the region prevent conflict and preserve uh, peace. So, Madam President, we also addressed the situation in Belarus. All NATO allies support a sovereign and independent Belarus. We are deeply concerned by the detention and abduction of opposition figures. Both Minsk and Moscow <coughs> should respect the right of Belarusian people to determine their own future through an inclusive political dialogue. The decision to limit the diplomatic presence of allies in uh, Minsk is unjustified and we regret it. Allies stand together in solidarity and we urge Minsk to reconsider its uh, decision. NATO remains vigilant, strictly defensive and ready to deter any aggression against the uh, allies. The security situation remains complex and unpredictable. So we discussed NATO 2030 and our efforts to make a strong alliance even stronger for the next decade and beyond. We must ensure that we remain strong militarily, become stronger politically and take a more global approach to the challenges we face. So President De Kersti, thank you uh, once again for your strong commitment to our alliance. I also want to thank you uh, for the presidential decoration you have given me today. It is a great honor uh, for me personally. Uh, it is also a symbol of the unbreakable bond between Estonia and uh, NATO. So thank you once again, and once again, welcome to the NATO headquarters. Thank you, thank you, Jens. Tere, ma alustan Eesti keeles, sest ma tean, et ka Eesti meedia jälgib meid praegu. Just uh, greeting to Estonian journalists who are hopefully following this uh, first ever virtual press conference from the press room of NATO. And uh, when we discussed this with your colleagues, they said that, yes, let's test it with Estonians, because, of course, you are very used to these things. So uh, I'm very happy we are together also making history here. And I also hope that we will get some uh, questions from the virtual channels uh, later on. And I would really want to hear in front of the cameras once more say that we in Estonia, me personally, we really appreciate your personal contribution and commitment in keeping NATO up with ever-changing security situation. And your, your years here in NATO have not been easy. But when people say the world is so complex, has it ever been easier? No, it hasn't. The history throws new challenges on you, now the virus, Belarusian question, where you have been strong and, and concrete in your stance, also Ukraine, Georgia, before that. And you have been able always to do what you could with the resources you had, and we are very grateful uh, for you. 
When we talk about NATO and deterrence, of course, in Estonia, for most people, they associate with EFP and, uh, and Baltic air policing emissions. And I would like to forward my, 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 uh, my great thanks to all allies who are participating, all NATO allies who are participating, not only in Estonian EFP, but in Baltic states and Poland, and the many who are part of the air policing missions. Because Estonia being one of the smallest economies, even when spending 2% and next year even close to 2.3% because of the contracting, uh, contracting economy, we would never be able to guarantee the protection of, uh, of northeast corner of NATO alone. So we do rely on NATO, but we keep doing what we can, and we are very grateful for the solidarity shown to us. NATO, of course, functions 360 degrees, and, uh, and this is what uh, we in Estonia always keep in mind that while we have uh, our allies in, in Amari and in Tapa, then we are also present and visible in NATO's southern missions. And, uh, and uh, I always, when sending our soldiers on missions, tell them that Lucky is a soldier who can protect their homeland from afar. And this is the opportunity which having NATO has uh, given also to us. We are responsible contributors to the global security. We don't want to be seen as consumers or the security. We have, of course, other challenges. The world behind NATO's borders is restless and uh, we have to follow very closely the situation and tensions in the conflict that are evolving in our neighbourhood. We have to rely on each other's information and analysis and trust each other's uh, information and analysis. And I can tell you that there as well NATO is an, uh, is an exemplary partner for Estonia uh, and also we would like to very much thank you for the NATO 2030 exercise, which is providing the insights into, into what we need to be ready for, including technological challenges and geopolitical challenges. So once more, thank you very much for, uh, for this meeting and everything you've been doing. It's always a pleasure to be in Brussels and, uh, and come here to the NATO headquarters. You feel really protected here. We can now go to our first question, uh, and that's uh, Evelyn Caldoya from Postimes. Evelyn, please uh, ask your question uh, and say who uh, you ask it of. Thank you. I'm uh, okay. Uh, I'm, I have a question about COVID-19 and NATO. So, in Spain, somewhat surprisingly, Spain called NATO to the rescue in spring when they were overwhelmed by COVID crisis. And after that, several other countries followed Spain's example and asked for NATO's help. So, first question to both of you, and second one maybe more to the Secretary General. Uh, firstly, how surprised were you initially when you saw that NATO is taking up such a big role in this civilian crisis, considering that some other organizations may be better suited for that purpose? And secondly, what kind of role is NATO ready to take up now as the virus numbers grow up again. Thank you. Maybe I will start and then uh, forward planning is your domain. But, uh, I, I have a feeling that NATO felt it needs to react uh, for the reason that every uh, civilian crisis uh, results in perturbances in societies and they always carry the risk of turning into also security crisis. And to avoid this to happening, then also military organizations which are trained and tested to fight crisis of any kind naturally come come to the help of the civilian societies, also making themselves seen as a valuable asset also in the peacetime. So I'm grateful for what NATO has been doing in this context. Now with the virus numbers, do we fight with fever or we don't? <laughs> First of all, I think you have to remember that NATO is an organization which always is ready for uh, managing tackling crisis. Uh, readiness, uh, uh, response, uh, uh, emergency is something uh, we are always uh, ready to uh, uh, deal with. Uh, so when we saw the uh, COVID-19, when we saw the pandemic, uh, of course we started to plan, but we also saw that across the whole alliance, NATO allies uh, stepped up and used their military capabilities to support the civilian efforts in combating uh, the uh, virus, the uh, corona, uh, virus, the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And I think uh, it is great to see how actually men and women in uniform has been so helpful in supporting uh, civilian efforts to deal with the pandemic. I think we have to remember that NATO's primary responsibility is and has been uh, to prevent this health crisis from becoming a security crisis. 
So what we have focused on is, of course, that we are able to provide deterrence and defense uh, in the midst of a health crisis, that we maintain our readiness, uh, our, our missions and operations, and our ability to reinforce, uh, to help, to assist any ally against any threat. And the good news is that that's exactly what we have been able to do. We have been able to uphold our operational readiness to maintain uh, missions and operations, uh, to uh, continue to exercise. We have adapted some exercises, but we continue to exercise. So by pro proving that we can maintain uh, the turns and events uh, in the midst of uh, a pandemic uh, confirms the strength of this alliance and, and uh, the professionalism, the courage, and the, and the ability of our uh, troops and forces in different missions and operations from Afghanistan uh, to, of course, battle groups in, in the Baltic countries and, uh, and elsewhere. We are uh, now, of course, also ready to deal with what many people always, uh, uh, many, many people always uh, regard as a second wave, at least a new increase in the number of infected people. Uh, so we have established a stockpile uh, that can provide support to uh, allies and partners. Uh, we have a plan in place to better coordinate the efforts of NATO allies uh, and also uh, some financial instruments that can also support allies. What we saw uh, this uh, before the summer, or the, in the, from March until now, actually been that uh, uh, allies, uh, uh, troops, NATO has been able to set up many field hospitals, transport a lot of patients, and uh, provide practical help in many different ways to uh, the civilian health services. Thank you. Uh, then we go for our second question also to Tallinn, to Josep Weck from Estonian Public Broadcasting. Josep, over to you. Hello, uh, I'm Rosa Park from Estonian Public Broadcasting. Actually, I'm uh, from uh, calling you from Brussels. Uh, my question is: is uh, if you if you are concerned that in the aftermath of the COVID-19 induced economic crisis, the member states might have temptation to cut their national defense expenditures and with that weaken the alliance, and also what can you and maybe more concerned member states do to avoid that? We can keep ourselves, I mean, keep our promises to Article 3 and spend 2% and more from Estonia. This, I believe, is the best one member state can do. This just confirms uh, what uh, uh, Estonia has done for many years, and that is that uh, Estonia is leading uh, by example, by spending 2% uh, on defence and a clear commitment from the President just reaffirms uh, the leadership uh, uh, that uh, Estonia demonstrates when it comes to burden sharing and defence uh, investments. I, I understand that for allies, of course, it is a, a challenge. It is not always easy to uh, invest in defence, to spend on defence, um, when uh, they are in the midst of a health crisis, a pandemic. Having said that, the reality is that the threats and the challenges that uh, made us agree uh, to invest more in defence uh, back in 2014 when we made what we call the Defence Investment Pledge to, 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 to spend 2% of GDP uh, uh, on defence, those threats and challenges, they have not gone away. They are still there. Uh, and second, as I just mentioned, what we have seen uh, over the last months is that actually uh, military capabilities have been extremely helpful in supporting uh, the uh, civilian society in uh, fighting the pandemic. Field hospitals, transporting equipment, uh, uh, disinfecting public spaces, helping uh, in many different ways the public health services. So, so we need to uphold the momentum and the good news is that uh, what we have seen so far is that uh, allies continue to invest and uh, over the last years, all allies have uh, increased defence spending because we need to invest in our security. Thank you very much. This is all we have uh, time for. This concludes this press point. Thank you.